Well, the kids' passport renewals finally came back, so you know what that means. We've thrown the proverbial dart at a map and ditched the U.S. Well, sort of. This week, we're in the Caribbean cultural cauldron of Puerto Rico. Don't miss our other episode on one perfect day in old San Juan, the oldest city on U.S. soil. But today, we're experiencing a different side of life on the island. From beautiful beaches that stretch for miles, and seaside food shacks serving up authentic local eats, to a tour of the three-bedroom luxury residence where we're crashing, and a visit to the only tropical rainforest in the U.S. Forest Service. Speaking of, we're here during the rainy hurricane season, but the entire family is up for whatever Mother Nature blows our way. The water is the perfect temperature. It's just the pinchiest cold. I cannot wait to fully swim in that water. So let's start with a little tour of our home away from home. We're staying in a private villa on the sprawling Bahia Beach Resort and Golf Club here on the northern coast of the island, about 45 minutes east of the San Juan capital. The grounds are made up of hundreds of acres of water recreation, wildlife sanctuary, private residences like ours, and the St. Regis Bahia Beach, the only five diamond resort in Puerto Rico. Our villa is part of the Las Ferrandas compounds. These residences are roomy, modern, luxurious homes with multiple bedrooms that live like mansions, with multiple spa-like bathrooms around every corner. Formal living and dining rooms in light-filled open concept layouts, fully appointed gourmet kitchens that are great for homemade meals, and in-home chefs, private full-size laundry rooms, spacious patios that let you enjoy the warm year-round weather, and even some private plunge pools to add to the multiple swimming holes offered throughout the resort. All of these villas have incredible views of the world-class golf course or the turquoise waters of the Atlantic Ocean. They can easily cost thousands of dollars per night, but we booked a week through our membership with Inspirato, who manages several of these beauties and makes it available to families like ours without charging any nightly rates. If you want to learn more about how that program allows our family to travel like this, check out followabc.com slash pass. There are endless activities on the nearly 500 acres of this resort, like golfing on a spectacular course where 15 of its 18 holes border the water, but still offer direct views of the El Junque rainforest. Or visiting the Freshwater Lake Boathouse, where you can get a seriously fun workout over an intense family game of Wipeout. This was probably Brooklyn's and Colt's favorite on-resort activity. We had the entire course to ourselves, and it didn't cost us a dime. <laughs> You can take a guided nature tour through this Audubon International Certified Wildlife Sanctuary, or just cool off in one of the multiple swimming pools that are scattered throughout the resort grounds. There are so many other things to do here, but we're already working up our appetites, so we're gonna drive a few miles up the road for a local bite. So if you wanna get a local Puerto Rican food experience, you have to come to La Quillo and go see their kiosks. It is a long street of food, drink, souvenir kiosks. <laughs> so they're kinda like huts that are all lined up right on the beach and right off the highway. So it's pretty easy to get to. And they serve all kinds of food, everything from gourmet Italian to stuffed burgers and authentic Puerto Rican food and ceviche, which is what I want to start off with. I know nothing about this restaurant, but I know it's gonna be good. The kiosks are actually on the street side, not the beach side. So we've got to cross the street here, get past some of these mud puddles. Nothing is tropical without some mud puddles. Yeah! <laughs> Feisty that one. Watch your cars, guys. First stop is stall 42, which is ceviche hut. It's Peruvian cuisine run by a couple, and they have a variety of things on their menu. We're going with their namesake and getting ceviche. Wow, this looks super unique. Yeah, of course, buddy. Mm. Oh, that's good. And that's snapper? Grouper. Probably like corn nuts. It's big corn. Um, it's crunchy, but not as crunchy as corn nuts. Try the octopus, buddy. That is also the best octopus I've ever had in my entire life. I'd give you some of the shrimp, but I know you don't like shrimp. I don't. And then what's this? Sweet potato? Yeah. yeah. It's really good. Everything is so tender. That is delicious. That 
That is delicious. I love every element of this. The sweet potato, the crunchy corn, the octopus, the lime, it's almost sweet. It's not tart, so good. Mmm, mmm. I love the crunchiness. The Peruvian corn nuts makes it, and the sweet potato makes it so unique. And then again, the, the lime juice that it's cooked in, it's not tart. It's almost a little bit sweet. And so it makes everything soft and tender. Truly, truly delicious. Okay, a little change of pace. We're gonna get a cocktail now at the Mojito Lab. Una mojito, por favor. Yes. Uh, what flavors do you have? All right, they have coconut, pineapple, oh, yeah. guava, sour What's sour. best, traditional? Traditional. Small piece. Interesting to see how their preparation matches what we got in the uh, mojito episode that we did in South Beach, Miami. Did you use granulated sugar? White yeah. sugar, is that what you use? Yes. Yeah, white sugar. Same as Miami. Thank you. I like that the sugar on the bottom isn't fully dissolved, so you get these chunks of sugar when you take a sip. A little crunch crunch. These kiosks aren't just known by their names, they're known by their numbers as well. So we've walked all the way down to the very end at kiosk 60 at Broca Tano. And as you can see, it's really popular. We had to come here because it is classic, authentic Puerto Rican food. And now the line just disappeared, so we have to go right now while we have the chance. Quick! And shrimp and fish and crab and beef. Which one's your favorite? Chicken. All right, let's do a chicken and a crab. It's food, babe. Yeah. And it's a lot of it. We got quite a few things. Ooh, that's so hot. I can only actually tell you what one of them are. I forgot to pay. Phil has been paying all week so far, and I forgot. There you go. Thank you. Now there's a lot of music and talking, different language, accents. I could not understand a whole lot, so I can only tell you what one of these things are. Is. Is. <laughs> I was a journalism major. Believe it or not, it's a taco. It is not your traditional taco that you see in Mexico, obviously. It is a corn tortilla with, it's more like an empanada. It's like got the meat in the middle, it's wrapped up and then deep fried. And we have a chicken one and a crab one. Chicken! <laughs> mm. So we assume this is a crab one. I'm gonna break it in the middle. Woo wee! It doesn't look like crab, but it smells like crab. Really good, strong crab flavors. Again, the tortillas are really doughy. Moving on to the next one, and again, I don't know what it's called. There's beef in here, but if you know what it's called, help us out and put it in the comments, because I'm really curious. Mmm, yeah you do. This is like a deep fried cornmeal with like cheese and beef, and this is so good, Cole. Wow, right? Only negative? Look at all the grease on my fingers. Now it's going in my bod. Mm. You gotta try it. Last one before we leave. We had to get this because when we were standing in line, we met somebody who was born in Puerto Rico, and he said, best item on the menu. Again, I don't know what it is. Fish inside. So again, if you know what it is, comment below, please. Very flat piece of fish. Colt's losing his mind. He's so curious and he wants to try it. So you can have the first bite, but I can tell it's a little hot, so. It's way too hot. Way too hot? My turn then. Oh, that is good. This is like fair food, because everything's deep fried. All right, that one, not my favorite. This one, winner for me. So let's finish this up, head out, go do some more Puerto Rico stuff. In 1898, Spain lost the Spanish-American War and turned over Puerto Rico to the United States. It thereby became a U.S. territory, and in 1917, the people of Puerto Rico were granted U.S. citizenship. That means Puerto Ricans and Americans can freely travel and live back and forth, even without visas or passports. Puerto Rico is Spanish for rich port, and with its spectacular waters and spectacular beaches, it's easy to see why. This is the Two Mile Crescent Beach, where you can enjoy the sun, sand, and surf of the Atlantic while avoiding any pesky crowds. We're spending most of our days exploring the island, but for anyone who prefers the beach bum life, this one offers kite surfing, wind surfing, skim boarding, ocean paddle boarding, e-foils, ocean kayaking, and beach volleyball, all with rentals and lessons available for most. No trip to Puerto Rico would be complete without a trek through its tropical treasures. And if you look south from anywhere around here, you'll see the emerald peaks that are just a short drive away. 
Getting to El Junque was not difficult at all. It was about a 30 minute ride from where we were staying and we had to get tickets ahead of time to register our vehicle for parking online. And it's a timed entrance. So we got here right at 11. Sorry, it's loud. That's better. We got here right at 11 and we have until 2 p.m. to explore the park. And it was only $2 per vehicle. This is El Junque Rainforest, and it is the only rainforest we have in the U.S. in our national park system. And right here behind me is, help me out here. Yokohu Tower. Yokohu Tower. Phil's gonna tell you more about that. Yeah, Yokohu is actually the name of the good god that was worshiped by the Taino natives who lived here. And Yokohu lived at the peak right here in El Junque, and the Taino would pray for his safety from the god, the bad god of the winds. And his name was Huracan, which is the origination for the English word hurricane. And Taino means the good people. And on average, it rains here three times a day, although so far we have lucked out, which is unusual for this trip. But the highest peaks here will often be covered in clouds, and all that moisture then comes down to create these beautiful waterfalls that you can find all over and in some cases swim in. Getting to some of these waterfalls is easier said than done, especially when you pick the ones that are up the highest because they're supposed to have the fewest people. It's very muddy up here. Okay, maybe we walked a little too far because it looks like the trail ends here and we haven't found the uh, magical waterfall that we were expecting. And now it's starting to rain, so this is gonna be a pretty tricky hike back down these slippery slopes. Okay, yeah, I think this is the highest up you should really go in these weather conditions. I don't know what else is up there, but this one's perfectly fun. Now this is Puerto Rico. Rico. Oh. Not your favorite, honey bunny? Well, I'm proud of you. That was a good hike. I'm glad you suggested it. What a great experience, you know? Whoa, that was wild. That was wild. That rain was so hard. Am I wet? A little bit? Sunglasses get wet. <laughs> that was a wild adventure. And honestly, I wouldn't trade it. I love experiences like that. It wasn't what we expected. It, it wasn't our goal to see the waterfall, that didn't happen, but instead we had this crazy adventure where we had to help each other, we had to go slow, we had to hold hands, and we were a, a family, Team Lockwood! And we got down safely, and I'm really surprised that nobody fell in the mud. I'm surprised I didn't fall in the mud. How many people can say they've been stuck in a downpour in a tropical rainforest? That's I mean, it's not a hard thing to do, but 99% of people will never do that. And I love it. Growing up, I didn't care for rain because I grew up in the Midwest and rain was miserable. But when you're out in a place like this, where it's beautiful skies and a downpour and then the sun comes back out, I can stay out here all day. I love it. Okay, we're gonna stop off at this restaurant to get some lunch because it looks very authentic and we're very hungry. But this is my shirt. I think I have to bring it out. <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of water. <laughs> All right, let's get into this classy establishment. <laughs> Sit out here. This is really hitting the spot because it's warming us back up and it's given us time to wait until the weather cleared and it's all dry now. This river has flooded the streets. Everybody's stopped and... Um, I think we have to wait for it to recede. There's no other way out of here. And we might try to go through. Because we're in a Bronco and uh, we might be able to be, we might be okay. We're definitely gonna go for it, but I wanna make sure the people in front of us make it through because if we have to stop behind them in the middle of this water, we're toast. And some of these look really questionable. All right, I think it's good enough. Oh so my nice. gosh. Oh my gosh! Yeah, see? Wow. In 200 meters, turn left onto Calle Principal, Puerto Rico 955. <laughs> oh my god, it's so high! Between our resort lodgings, the endless beaches, the downpour in the rainforest, the authentic food in charming little towns, and a full day of culture in the big city of San Juan, 
it's clear that Puerto Rico is a U.S. national treasure. Honestly, we can't believe it took us this long to visit for the first time. It's great to call Puerto Ricans our fellow citizens, and we're proud to be associated with their beautiful Caribbean culture. But now we're off on a three-week trip through Southeast Asia. It's going to be our longest, most elaborate, and most expensive, and most adventurous travel experience ever. So please, consider squashing that subscribe button to follow us on our journey. Now it's Saturday, which means college football game day, and I happen to be a duck fan. Thank you. See you tomorrow.